I am an animation director, director, animation director, writer. Um, I've worked in commercials for a long time. Uh, I transitioned into entertainment a while back and done a lot of game cinematics and uh, developed feature films and directed television, all kinds of stuff. I'm kind of curious, like for you growing up, did you always imagine you'd be in some kind of creative role? You know, I, I think I took a little bit more of a long winding path to get here than, than some. You know, I, I reflect on Matt Damon and Ben Affleck winning an Oscar for <laughs> best screenplay when they were like 19 years old or something. At, at 19, I was a, uh, I was actually pursuing a career in professional skiing. Wow. Yeah, it was very, very different. Uh, I was an athlete for a long time and I thought that was, that was going to be my calling. But as I think is the story with a lot of athletes, I got hurt way too many times of devastating injuries that, <laughs> that really made me reflect on my life and, and decided that I, I needed to focus a lot more heavily on developing my brain than just <laughs> using the body for, you know, for decades. So I, there was a friend of mine, I, I'd been shooting a lot of ski videos um, with my friends. Um, and so that was where I first picked up a camera and started directing. And uh, I have a good friend of mine was, was a tremendous graphic designer, a brilliant artist. And he, he wanted to, to get into web design. Uh, this was, you know, er, early 2000s. He wanted to get into web design and he needed somebody that could, that could program. And I, I was working at this little computer store in Hood River, Oregon, fixing Apple computers. I had like done my certifications and was swapping out parts and things like that. And I was like, yeah, I'll, that sounds like a good idea. We can make a ton of money that way. So I moved to Portland, Oregon and enrolled at the Art Institute of Portland for web design. And I got about, I don't know, like a month into the program and I was I was looking around at, at you know the other web designers and then I was looking over at the film students that were having a blast and running around and like running and gunning with their cameras and and they were you know a lot more eccentric and I was like that's that's where I want to be. <laughs> so I quit my I quit my um uh, my major after like a month or two and just switched to the film department and uh and then I spent so I did a, a my undergrad there four years um three and a half to four years and I got my bachelor's but for some reason I just I gravitated towards animation I ended up I think I was the only one at the end of the at the end of my school year that or at the end of my major that did an animated film for my thesis so everybody else did live action films um, and I can't even tell you why. I don't. I really don't know why that. I, it, there was never a choice. Like I just. I wanted to do an animated film. It wasn't something that I actively thought about. Um, and I was. I, I don't know if you're familiar in Portland. There's another studio called Bent Image Lab. Yeah, I know them. At the time, they were an offshoot of a bunch of, of old Will Vinton people. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were another stop motion studio. And I. I was doing an internship there to fulfill my internship at college. And they had. Um, stage space and they had some other interns there and art department and stuff that they allowed me to use to make my thesis so um, I got a little extra support from them and uh, ultimately ended up making my thesis film and that's what I think that's when I I kind of realized that I was maybe I had the sliver of talent <laughs> that could be <laughs> valuable because um, because I started to submit it to some festivals afterwards and it and it really got a lot of traction and it it uh it went to the student academy awards and was a finalist there and so after that I I realized that that was my I guess maybe my, more of my calling in life and from then you know my career went on this similarly winding path through commercials I moved to Seattle and worked at a company up there doing um design and, and live action and animation and directing a lot of commercial spots you know, learning how to pitch ad agencies and clients and, and, and do my own sets of boards that could sell a concept and, you know, all that stuff. And from there, I moved to, to New York. Um, I, uh, I got a job as a creative director out in New York at another company called Logan. Uh, and that's where I, I got really got my experience sort of running a company and dealing with every pitch that came through the door and directing a bunch of stuff in live action. And then my path took me back to Portland um, where I got hired by Leica. Um, to work at, at Leica House and then did an animated film there and then moved to LA and pursued my entertainment career. It's my winder. You created a short film called The Alchemist Letter and that was narrated by John Hurt, right? Given that, like what inspired the, the story for it? And can you talk a little bit about the, the process behind it? I had done my short film in college and back in Portland and that had done very well. And then I hadn't, I was think I wanted to do another one and I hadn't started writing one. Um, and I was talking to that to that creative director, David Viao, and he was actually the first one that we were just kicking around some ideas. And he's like, you know what's, he's like, you know what's really fascinating? Alchemy is fascinating. And the guy speaks in this very like passionate <laughs> tone. So I was like, you're right, alchemy is really interesting. And then he just walked away, which is what he would do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is interesting. And then he would, he would book it into another room. Um, and so I was kind of left with that little nugget of information. And I was like, he's, he's right. Alchemy is really interesting anyway. And moving forward though, uh, it, it resonated with me because my, my family, um, is involved in, a, in, a, in an alchemy of sorts. My father is a, a PhD um, psychotherapist mm -hmm. who's practiced shamanism for many, many years. And so I've always kind of been in and around uh, ideas of shamanism and, you know, shamanism is rooted in, in ancient, ancient practice, you know, that dates back thousands of years. And so alchemy has always been sort of a part of my life. And I was, the story is not in any way reflective of my relationship with my father because <laughs> i think some people might might uh, might might believe that there's some truth or nugget to that buried in there but it's not actually my my father has been phenomenal you know phenomenally committed and and uh um an available dad to me and guide my entire life so it's sort of the opposite you know i i didn't have kids when i wrote it but I always knew that I wanted to. And I was so, I've always been so committed to my work and my craft that uh, I've, there was this little thing in the back of my mind that always questioned whether or not I was going to be as good of a father as my own dad was, or if I was going to, if I was going to be absentee, or if I was going to somehow, if I was going to somehow pay more attention to my work than to my own child. And so I, I really channeled the, that fear that I had deep down in a story about this idea of uh, the currency of life, you know, and the currency of life being. Do you feel like a lot of the time that is the case? It's, it's timing, it's relationships, it's a bit of everything? 100%. Uh, I think it's probably a healthy mixture of extremely hard work, um, dedication, commitment, never giving up, you know. And then if you do those things, then yes, then the relationships are the things that actually make deliver all the payoffs to it um and so i mean you know most of dare i say most of the work the high profile work that i've done because i've slogged through some you know a lot of stuff in my career too but most of the high profile jobs that i've that i've gotten have been through relationships on the back end of you know having worked really hard on something with somebody that maybe didn't pan out because of that work that we did and because of that effort and because we had a good time formed a great relationship or whatever then down the road, uh, this new thing came around and it was much, much easier to get because um, like in some, I won't give any specific examples, but in some cases there have been really big projects that I've, you know, won or been hired to do without even pitching on them because, because I had done something else in the past where I'd done this, you know, I'd worked super hard on a pitch or something like that. And maybe I didn't end up winning the job, but they were really impressed with me and my style or whatever. And so then down the road, they were like, oh, actually, he's the perfect guy for this. So let's just, you know, hire him and bring him in. So that's right. That's right. And I guess just to pivot a little bit, I'd love to talk a bit about LDR3. You directed Mason's Rats for season three of Love, Death and Robots. How did that project come about? So that was one of those where a relationship paid huge dividends. I to track it all the way back when I was working at, at Leica. In fact, the CG supervisor slash art director on my, actually he was an art director. He wasn't the CG supervisor. He was like a CG art director. Let me put it that way. Kind of split the lines between those two things. His name is Dan Casey. Uh, and and I, I love the guy to death. We had a phenomenal relationship. He still lives in Portland. Um, but uh, when I moved down to LA, I remember I was, I'd, I'd gotten my first agent, uh, but I didn't have a manager. And he said, uh, he wanted to put me in contact with somebody that he knew that was a manager down here. So he put me in contact with my current manager, his name's Tarek Heitman. And um, and so I formed a relationship with Tarek and we started working together and Tarek put me in touch with one of his other clients, which is Axis Animation in Scotland. Um, and so while I was sort of like reworking the fabric of my career down in Los Angeles, transitioning from commercial more into entertainment, um, I started working with Axis a lot on on game cinematics in order to survive, <laughs> you know, and pay some bills. 